Hey, it's Will Friedell. And Sabrina Bryan. And we're the hosts of the new podcast, Magical Rewind. You may know us from some of your favorite childhood TV movies like My Date with the President's Daughter. And the Cheetah Girls movies. Together, we're sitting down to watch all the movies you grew up with and chat with some of your favorite stars and crew that made these iconic movies happen. So kick back, grab your popcorn, and join us. Listen to Magical Rewind on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Your getaway with Apple Vacations begins the moment you step on board one of our exclusive nonstop vacation flights. Escape the ordinary with packages starting at just $599. No layovers, just pure relaxation from takeoff to touchdown. Immerse yourself in the joy of travel with Apple Vacations. Your journey is as enchanting as the destination. So pack your bags and leave the rest to us. Visit AppleVacations.com or call your local travel advisor to book your vacation. Welcome to another episode of Her Playbook, brought to you by Nike. March is Women's History Month, and as a part of the celebration of it, we invited all Giants staff to join us for a panel discussion on the growth of flag football in New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, and surrounding areas. Now, the sport is growing rapidly, and we had quite the conversation with some coaches and players. Take a listen. Awesome. Thanks so much, you guys. And thank you for all being here and for talking about this. Of course, as, as Ethan and Tara mentioned, this is a really fast growing, rapidly growing sport. So I just want to go down the line and get your uh, insight and interest in, in how and why you got started in this flag football journey. I have five kids. My wife was adamant that they would not play tackle football. So the alternative was flag uh, We were traveling about 30 minutes to, to another flag football league. Uh, the kids loved it. Uh, the folks that started that league said, hey, why don't you start your own? So back in 2018, that's what happened. I started my own league, and boom, we're here. My name is. Uh, so I'm a high school physical education teacher and a football coach. Uh, I've been there for 32 years. Um, we have this hill that we walk down to get to our field every day to get to whatever it is that we're doing from an activity standpoint. And year in and year out, the girls that were in my class kept saying, Coach, can I play football? Can I play football? Or I'm going to try out for football in the fall. So finally I said, you know what, we're going to have football. You know, and uh, what we did was uh, we started out a couple of years ago. We've grown to where we are right now in the short conference. is 14 teams, thanks to Ethan and Tara and all their help. But uh, it's been a great run and it's continued to, you know, the momentum is exactly where we need it to be and we're going to continue to grow. Katie and I, between us, have five girls and Katie had run an after school program to introduce these girls to sports in their elementary age. And the girls came off the field and from playing flag football and said, oh, we got to play this. This is so much fun. And I said to Katie, you want to start a league? And she said, sure. So um, we started with an in-town volunteer recreational league. We spent four years, kindergarten through eighth grade, grew it to 250 girls strong. And now that um, we want to be on beyond the parameters of our town, we needed to create another entity, which became Gridiron Partners, to reach anyone and anywhere in any town that's female and wants to play. Jen, I love the simplicity with that. It's just, you want to start a league? Sure, why not, right? Let's problem solution right there. But it, obviously so much growth, and I'll start with you on this one, is you know, how would you describe the growth that you've seen in the last couple of years, and also in your relationship with the Giants in that regard? First of all, I think that the most important thing about um, our experience with the Giants is that when we met with Ethan, Tara, and the team, there was never a feeling of um, the proverbial, you know, let's give a hand down and help you up. It was a, right from the get-go, a feeling of we're side by side, you deserve to be here, and this is what we're going to do with you. And it helped give us that feeling of you know, strength, validity, that we felt was so important to get the word out about our program. Um, additionally, our mission is that we wanted girls to really know that whether it was a football field or a boardroom, that they had the right and they deserved to be there and that it should never ever cross their mind that they didn't deserve to be there. And I think that working with the Giants, that's exactly the feeling we got, as if we were Alliance and next to, not you know being helped. Katie, I know you had a, a couple things you'd wanted to say in that regard. 
Yeah, and I just wanted to thank Chris Mara because he was the person I had first reached out to to ask about if the Giants were going to be in partnership making a girls' flag football league, which got us in touch with Ethan and, Ethan and Tara. And they really have been so magnificent with us. They never made us feel insignificant. They wanted to grow the game as much as we did. And we started out with 30 girls, and now we've grown to the high school league, and they always ask us, what can we do? I never feel like a bother to them, even though I feel like I do. But they always make us feel that we are significant in our journey, and we want to grow this, and they are always there for us. So thank you for that. Steve, I'm curious your growth the last couple of years. Uh, so we, we started out with eight teams, uh, and we're currently now at 14. Uh, we're continuing to grow, like we said, uh, year in and year out. Um, we have a JV program also, so you know we're in the high school level where we, we started with JV games as well as varsity games. We're looking to grow uh, even more, have a meeting on Thursday actually with our uh, NGSIA uh, president, and we're going to sit down about the possibilities of sanctioning our sport within the next couple of years. And uh, like Ethan said, we're on the path to, to get it to where uh, we're going to be playing for state championships in New Jersey for flag football. So the growth is continuous, you know, and uh, to echo what, what was said earlier, um, you know, when I think of, uh, you know, Ethan and, and Tara and their help, I go back to our first clinic back in Ocean and the energy that you guys brought to that day, uh, you know, just to uh, the girls, the smiles on their faces and, and you know, the the, the, the moments that they shared on that particular morning were, were tremendous. So, uh, again, we can't thank you enough, but, uh, you know, we, we obviously are extremely appreciative of everything that you guys have done for us. So um, CT Flag started with 150 kids in a neighborhood park, and uh, we're up to 900 per season now, um, three different towns. Uh, we went from... I think we had nine girls uh, in our first co-ed league. We're up over 60 now, and to the point, like, now we have a whole separate girls' league. Well, and I'd imagine, you know, as coaches and as organizers, feeling that support outwardly also kind of translates to how much these young girls and women really appreciate the support that you give them in this journey and in this growing sport. I mean, you mentioned, Jen, I think just how much that sports are so good, especially for young girls and women, whether you're on the field or in a boardroom or in any sport of life, you can really translate these skills. What has been, I'm curious for each of you, what the most powerful moment throughout this process, throughout this growing uh, sport has been for you? Brandon, I'll start with you. So um, a couple years ago, uh, it was actually two years ago, we had a um, NBC 30 in Connecticut came out and did a feature on our, um, on our league. And so I picked two people to, to, um, for the um, newscaster to interview. It was a boy and then my daughter. And uh, while Isabella is being interviewed, unprompted, uh, and I didn't even notice this until actually I watched it back, she was going on about how she liked flag football and she was going to continue to play until she couldn't because it wasn't a high school sport yet. And she literally said yet. And once she said that, I was like, okay, like I need to make this a thing. Like this needs to happen. And so that for me was like kind of what put the battery in my back to make this happen. Um, not just for her, her friends, all the other girls uh, in the community. Um, and it's, it's been amazing. Uh, for me, I think of two words, opportunity and pride. Uh, opportunity the girls have the opportunity to finally put themselves in a situation where they can play this great game you know and I, I've been a coach for 32 years I played the game in high school uh, I always tell kids who play for us it's the greatest game that was ever created you know the, the bonds and the relationships and the things that are created from the game of football are like none other you know so uh, for them to have that opportunity and for them to have the opportunity to actually play the game uh, you know in a situation where they're not only with their friends but they're competing against other schools in the short conference uh, which have history, you know, uh, you, you talk about high school football history, our school in the Shore Conference is one of the, you know, the premier names, and, and now we're playing some of the other premier name schools uh, in a different setting, obviously, with, with the girls playing, but the opportunity is there. And pride, I mean, every time I see the girls in the hallway, the smiles on their faces when they talk about, you know, spring football, we had our first practice yesterday, and leading up into that first practice, when I tell you in the hallways for a straight month, the girls that I would see in the hallways were so excited about spring football starting up March 20th 345 I'll be on the field coach can't wait what do I need bring my cleats bring this bring that so the excitement the pride the opportunity I think that's been the for me the most powerful thing I'd like to echo on opportunity so when I first became coach last year I asked all the girls on a coach's assignment to write me and say what does this mean to play flag football as a female and why is it significant and what do you think your future holds and 
mostly every girl put that it was life changing for them. So I think that creating opportunities when they're not there, we would like those girls to become members of the community to do the same, whether it's on the football field or whether it's outside of a football field. And actually one of my players yesterday when I was talking to her about playing in college, I said, are you gonna play? I'm gonna look at your school and see if there's a program. And she said, if there's not, I'm gonna make one. So just making sure that those girls know that those things are available to them and they can make them if they're not. On a last note, I just wanna add that as far as opportunity goes, what we're seeing in our community is our community was historically a um, tackle football community for the boys. And we really got a lot of kind of pushback initially when it started that we wanted to do girls programs. At the end of the day, here we are four or five years in, I will tell you that the boys football programs come and cheer for our girls, flag football. The girls in the community rallies around it. And um, additionally, it gives our girls, it you know, trickles down to the level of where they just feel like they're part of that community and they're equal billing. And it's very empowering for them. Our players have told Katie it's been life changing. We have one player, in fact, who played lacrosse along with my daughter. And as a senior, um, ended up trying for flag football. They both made the team. And this young lady, her mother was going through a very, very difficult time. She was very ill with cancer. And she was destroyed. And then she said that this saved her life. I mean, this was her lifeline. The, the camaraderie, the support, the passion, the love together. It's, a, it's just a different thing for these young girls. And it's, it's a beautiful thing to see. We're so grateful. And it's just incredible, again, how quickly this has grown and evolved from an ideation to a, really a prominent thing in high school sports. When you look at the way it's grown so far and what your goals for the future are for flag football for these young girls and young women, uh, Jen, I see you smiling over there. I'll start with you on this one. I, there are so many goals right now. There is, I mean, we started out with so many goals and said, gosh, are we ever going to get there? But we have. And now the goals are just, it's exponential. I mean, I can let Katie elaborate on that, but in terms of um, you know going from being a feeder program, which is what we do, to the high schools and then beyond, and and you know we have a women's league that has a hundred women in it, so you know obviously the possibilities are endless. I'm going to let Katie elaborate though on the next steps. So locally, we are trying to develop those feeder programs for high schools. We'll go around and we'll do interest clinics to see if there is no opportunity in their town. We'll make them so that they have um, a leg to go on for high school. But I think, um, you know, we have our women's league, but there's sort of a gap. And we would like to see um, it become a collegiate sport in a world uh, worldwide um, through the United States. So I think that bridging that gap for the girls and knowing that there's a place for them to play from youth to high school to college to, you know, when we're women, um, just to have those opportunities as females, I think would be amazing for the girls. Uh, so if you build it, they will come, right? You know, and that's uh, that's where we are right now. You know, we, uh, we want to make sure that we build it from the ground up and we build it to last. And that's where we stand, you know, in New Jersey. You know, and we, uh, we want to make sure that we're doing it the right way. We're taking every uh, you know, every step, uh, though some of them may be baby steps, we want to make sure that this is going to be something that will be around for a long time. And uh, the opportunity, like I said, for uh, the girls to go on and do things beyond, uh, you know, not just from a youth standpoint, from a high school standpoint, again, from a collegiate standpoint, and the opportunities being there for them. So uh, we are fortunate. We had our first, uh, you know, uh, player last year who went to the University of Florida, uh, played their uh, club flag football team, and won a national championship last year. So, uh, you know, we're, that's something that we're obviously taking a lot of pride in, you know, and that's something that we're looking forward to, not just her being uh, one, you know, one example, but many more to come. You know, so we're excited about that. So um, grow the game at every level. I mean, we were talking about it um, just before. And, you know, if you don't have, you know, the high school and the college and then eventually in 2028, hopefully the Olympic, you know, opportunities. Well, what are the girls at the youth level looking forward to? Right. And if you don't have um, the youth level, well, there's no high school, there's no college, there's no girls moving on to the Olympics to play. So and even in, in the women's league. <clears throat> Sure, I think it's awesome and fun that the, the women get out there, but I'm looking at that like, oh, okay, great. Now I have a whole pool of women who've played the game who can come coach their daughters or the other kids. I, I go after moms in the league. I'm like, you need to be out here coaching. 
So it's, it's a phenomenal example for those women, uh, for those girls to see their moms out there coaching. And I think, you know, that's just another opportunity off of the women's leagues. So we're, we're actually doing one this spring. I was warned maybe not to, um, but I think it's going to be an amazing opportunity for these women to, to not out there, get out there and compete and show their kids what they can do, but then learn the game and then teach it to their kids as well. I just first of all have to applaud you for giving me the perfect transition because our next panel is going to be both ends of that spectrum. But first, I just want to say thank you so much, Brandon, Steve, Katie, and Jen for the insight as well. And we're going to have a little bit of questions afterwards, but we're going to flip over the panels in between. Thank you all so much for the insight. Two very un different ends of the spectrum here. You know, Gianna, I'll start with you. You're playing right now flag football. This is your second year playing. Um, just first of all, how did you come into love flag football? My love for flag football, I think, stemmed from just growing up and watching my brother play f tackle football. My dad works here, coming to all the Giants games and just being able to watch it, even on just TV. But I've never had the opportunity to play for myself. In my town, we have flag football. I think it's K through four, but it's boy dominated. It you might have one or two girls maybe in your grade level that are branching out, but I know for my parents, they had a fear of me getting hit by a boy and if I'd be able to handle getting hurt. But once I, I think my sophomore year, it became available in my school and I jumped at it because what's more exciting than having the opportunity to play a sport that I've never had the opportunity to play. Yeah. I've been able to go to MetLife and meet with old retired refs of the NFL and they've been able to teach me the game because you take a group of girls who've never played football and now we're playing football yeah. and it's just been such a learning curve for everyone. Do you feel like being a part of the first wave of girls in New Jersey that are playing this, do you feel like being at the forefront of it, does that translate at all? Oh my God, I think it's awesome. Like yeah. I'm one of the first girls to be able to play this. Yeah. I was on part of the first team in my high school and now this is gonna carry on for how many ever years left. Yeah, yeah. And then now you look at somebody like Angela Baker over here who has won gold medals in tackle football, has played flag, has played football on multiple levels. I mean, when you look at that and what's possible in your in your football career, what does that mean to you? It's just inspiring like that I can have these opportunities now because if this was 20 years ago, I would not have been able to. But we have brands like the Giants and even the Jets and all the other NFL teams who are jumping at this opportunity to get girls into the sport and at the pro level and international level. Like it's just awesome that we're having this opportunity to play. Yeah. Angela, I got to ask too, how did you first fall in love with the sport? So I fell in love very young, but then that love just grew the more I got involved with it. Uh, my local Boys and Girls Club, every sport that we had was co-ed, so I wanted to be involved in everything. Um, my mom had us involved there after school, so basketball, deck hockey, golf, and then flag football. So I started playing with my older brother, and it was co-ed, and I just loved it. I look forward to the flag football more than anything else, but I was constantly an athlete growing up. Uh, you know, we learned it was just seven on seven at the time and it was still exciting as a, as a young kid. And then, you know, you get into high school and you're playing basketball or softball or other sports because as we, as she said, like the opportunities weren't there to play football unless you're playing for a local community, you know, program. So I started playing other sports, but every year I looked forward to the powder puff game. You know, it was all the girls, it was the different grades and we were four time champs. Um, but we loved it. We looked forward to it every year. And then, you know, I went to college. I wasn't playing a sport at the time. I, I didn't take my basketball or softball journey any further. For the first time in my life, I was stagnant. I was playing no sport and I could not function. I was bored out of my mind. And I had known about the Pittsburgh Passion, which is the women's professional tackle team in Pittsburgh. And I saw that they were having open tryouts and I said, sure, let's give it a shot and see what it's all about. I knew I loved flag. I watched plenty of football. You know, you grew up watching it, you know, and uh, I tried out and fell in love. Every weekend I was at practice. I was 45 minutes or an hour away from where we practiced. And I was more committed to that than college at the time, I'll be honest. Um, but I, I became obsessed, you know, watching videos and drawing out plays and studying our playbook. And then I played for eight seasons with the, with the Pittsburgh Passion uh, at a tackle level. And we did camps that were international or with international players. The Women's World Football Games started by USA Football. 
So we were able to teach American football to players from Sweden and Germany and all these other countries. And it just, the more it continued to grow, the more I became like obsessed. 2017 came around, uh, the US national team was hosting tryouts. I tried out, made that team. I was fortunate to play in Canada and we won a gold medal. So that was pretty awesome uh, to be a part of. And you know, we've talked now about how the, the women are growing in these local communities. We had a hundred different teams and now there's even more of full contact professional women's football teams and only 45 girls made that team. So for everybody to come from across the country to play together with that and win a gold medal was incredible. What advice do you have for this next wave of women? What, what do you want to see happen next in this sport? We're already starting to see what I want to see and it's just going to continue to grow. It's amazing to, to see people come together and want more, you know, to hear that it's not happening yet from all the, the younger generations is exactly what we want. We want it to happen um, at the Olympic level. You want it to happen in high schools. You want it to happen in more colleges. I mean, we're getting there, the NAIA, NJCAA having opportunities for girls to go and play in college. But I don't want it to stop until it's junior college, D3, D2, D1. So we're getting the opportunities and to be seen. I mean, it's amazing right now the coverage that's happening with March Madness and the girls and the boys. But that should be, you know, the same college football games that are on for the guys. I want to see the girls on ESPN too watching it. I want to be able to kick back in New Jersey and watch a team from California play. I don't think that we've even made a dent in the progress that's going to be seen. And I'm excited to continue to watch it evolve. Gianna, what it, when you look at someone like Angela and look at what the goals are possible for flag football for your football career, how far do you want to take this game? I mean, I would love the opportunity to be able to play in college. I'm not sure if I would take it to a tackle level or a pro <laughs> level, but I would definitely love to be able to continue it after high school, especially because I wasn't able to play my entire high school career and I wasn't able to play before high school. So it's like the three short years I do have, I'm holding on to, but I hope that I can play for longer because it's just so much fun. Yeah. So much fun, so much growth that we're seeing already in the sport. Um, I'm really grateful to you guys for, for sharing your stories. I don't want to take up all the oxygen, though. I want to open it up if anyone's got questions for these two or our, the rest of our panel from earlier today. So I know that the Giants and Ethan and Tara are doing a lot to help the growth of girls flag football, but what can we do as individuals to help the growth? If you have a football mind, just getting in there and volunteering, like we said. We started our clinic for our women just to allow women to understand football that didn't understand football. So bringing all those women together, even if they don't coach, at least they understand on the sideline, they can help their kids um, practice and know the knowledge of the game. Um, we are always looking for people to sponsor equipment, especially for kids who don't have the opportunities in their town, they don't have the funding for it. So if you have people or in, in this organization or anywhere that you know that would love to sponsor, um, that would really help these towns out that need it, that don't have the funding for it. And, and I know in our town, uh, we never had lights at our football field. They put lights in and Gianna's team was the first football team to play under the lights in Nutley. And it was a, a big town event. Everybody came out and all the boys came out and it was a lot of fun. And these, it's an exciting game. These kids, I'm watching them and I'm all these coaches will admit it. There's some hits that are going on. They're not supposed to be happening <laughs> that are harder than some of the boys I watch. And, um, and they're a lot easier to coach too, these girls, because they listen. <laughs> no doubt. I know Coach mentioned earlier on the, he was on the panel on the first part that you had a young lady that went to the University of Florida. Yes. Do we know, or anybody know that, what universities, how many universities, colleges play flag football? If you go to the NAI website, it'll give you a list of current schools um, and the ones that are coming online with uh, scholarship opportunities. All right. Thank you. I would say there's about 18 to 19 right now. Thank you. Thank you to all the panelists. Thank you to Ethan and Tara for the work that you're doing putting this together. Thank you all for coming in and listening and, and being a part of this conversation. And really excited to watch the growth of flag football over the next couple of years. So thank you. That's a wrap on this episode of Her Playbook brought to you by Nike. I'm Madeline Burke. We'll see you next time. 
You deserve to treat yourself. So turn your tax refund into a U-fund and give yourself a Straight Talk Wireless Extended Silver Unlimited plan and get a new Samsung Galaxy A14 on them. You can get a great everyday value on wireless with Straight Talk's unlimited plan starting at $25 a line per month for four lines. You'll save so much, you'll be enjoying that refund all year long. It's the refund that keeps on refunding. Find Straight Talk at straighttalk.com or at your local Walmart store. Taxes and fees not included. Offer valid through 4 24 while supplies last. Online only. Must purchase a Straight Talk extended silver unlimited plan to qualify. Limit of five phones per customer. Family plan discount with four lines all on the silver unlimited plan. Not combinable with auto pay discount. All-inclusive vacations make life easy with endless eats, bottomless drinks, and never-ending fun. So booking an all-inclusive vacation should be easy too, right? That's where Apple Vacations comes in. Book your all-inclusive getaway with Apple Vacations and receive exclusive perks at select resorts. You'll find the best deals to Hyatt, Zalara, Riviera Maya in Mexico and enjoy a selection of exclusive nonstop vacation flights. Turn on easy mode at applevacations.com or call your local travel advisor to get started. Visit applevacations.com or call your local travel advisor to get started.